are at, and we are back with another adventure. Today we're at U Harley Creek Cover Bridge. In 1886, the county contracted with Washington W. King, son of freed slave and noted bridge builder Horace King and Jonathan H. Burt, for the construction of this 138-foot bridge. It was adjacent to a mill owned by Daniel Lowry, of which the foundation is still evident. This bridge replaced several previous structures. The, the last having been built two years prior, constructed in the town lace design, the bridge's web of planks crisscrossing at 45 to 60 degree angles are fascinated with wooden pegs or turtles at which are, are at each intersection. Um, and then right over here, right across from us would be the Lowry grist mill or where it used to stand. Now it's uh, in ruins at the moment, but at least they still have it protected and preserved uh, that you can be able to see that. Um, here's a little bit of information about the Lowry uh, grist mill. Uh, before you Harley was officially incorporated, it was known as Berg's Mill. Its namesake, Nathan Berg, moved from Gwinnett County in 1834, brought 800 acres of land surrounding the Harley Creek, and built a grist mill along the bank. These mills were used for grinding wheat, corn, and other grains. Mills, mills work by depositing dry grains into the hopper, which leads to the grinding stone. Uh, and then the stone would then grind the grain into a mill, which could be packaged and sold. Uh, so here's a picture of kind of what they would, gr this is their corn mill uh, that they would eventually create after multiple steps and grinding. Um, but that is actually pretty neat that they still have some photos of what some of the packages look like uh, back in the day. Um, and then over here is the uh, plaque on the U Harley cover bridge. Oh, right here, baby, look. Hmm? Group of family. Is it them? There's, uh, that's Horace King. Um, George H. King, John T. King, Marshall N. King, W. R. Okay, so Washington W. King and Horace King was actually really uh, was the ones that that plaque was talking about that was contacted basically to create this bridge. Okay. Um, so, um, an earlier bridge collapsed in in 1871 while Captain uh, Nelson was crossing in a wagon. Nelson and another man were killed. The accident brought attention to the need for well-constructed bridge. A second wooden bridge was built to replace the original, but it was also destroyed by a flood. Uh, so, you know. Jeez, that thing right there? Yeah, it's been built. There was another, there was a, what it's saying is, there was a there was a bridge at one point, but it collapsed, killing um, Nel, uh, Captain Nelson and another man yeah. when they were crossing in a wagon. Uh, so, they built a what would probably be is this one the, the second dairy bridge uh going to 1886 um you know landmark in new harley washington w king which is this fellow right here um and then son of a frame fame bridge builder uh horace king uh is right here horace king um and then a local man, Jonathan H. Burke, which is not on this one right here, uh, were hired by Bartow County for this job. The, the bridge spans 138 feet to cover the U Harley Creek, and it cost a sum of $1,300 to construct. Um, uh, heavier automobiles increased traffic from plant. Bowen endangered the bridge. A concrete bridge was built in the late 1970s, and all auto traffic on the cover bridge was stopped. The bridge was listed on the National Registration of Historic Places in, in 1976 and is one of the oldest remaining cover bridges in Georgia. Uh, so that would be that bridge right there. Ain't that something? 
So that man, so that man right there, basically was crossing in a wagon and it collapsed. Well, he's not. A, he's not on here. Um, but the name is Camp Captain Nelson. Uh, so it'll be Nelson and another guy. Um, unfortunately, the other guy is not named. Uh, but there was uh, a captain by the name of Nelson uh, that was crossing in a wagon, and they and the bridge collapsed, ultimately killing both of them. They fell in that water right there. I believe. I mean, on, uh, yeah. And then, like it was saying him before, another one after that one destroyed or collapsed and killed those two men. They had another one that eventually was destroyed um, from a flood. Right. Um, so. This area has been notorious to cause havoc, it seems like. Um, but yeah, over so. here, there's another plaque that we're <clears> going to take a tour of. Um, and I think this one was talking about the Lowry um, residence yeah. or the family. Um, so right here in this area, the Lowry family homestead. Uh, so right here, Miller's house. Built prior to the Civil War, this house was known as the Miller's House since it housed the grist mills operator sold to U Harley Baptist Church for a personage in 1978. The building was moved closer to the church on Cover Bridge Road. In the early 2000s, the, the Miller's House was purchased by the city of U Harley and moved from its place near the Baptist Church to its current location and converted into the second home of the U Harley Hist History Museum. The museum remained there until 2015. Then you have the cow shed. Um, I don't know if it's over here still, but this yeah. this 1850s structure was origin original to the Lowry Farm and renovated in 1997. The building was used as a storage for farm supplies and for the other use essential farm functions later in the 20th century in addition was constructed and the facility was used as a single family dwelling it also housed the u harley history museum until 2007 then you have the little general store one of the few remaining smaller buildings original to the lowry farm this general storm would have been used primarily as a smokehouse or as a storage building which is that over there that little white building right there. Yeah. That's yeah. That. We're going to... We'll, so this... This is the Lowry homestead right here. Which is that right there. Yeah. Because it looks just like... See? Yeah. So that is that. Um, the Lowry homestead was located in this area prior to its destruction by fire in 1980s. Daniel Lowry, the second wife, Sarah, and their family moved to your Harley from Rock Mart. When Lowry purchased the mill site adjacent from adja and adjacent farmland, the Lowry family contributed to the U Harley community, including donating the land for the courthouse and the stones to build part of the cover bridge. After Daniel's death in 1902, his children continued to operate the mill and farm. Um, so that might not be his, because it just says that it was uh, dest destroyed in a fire. Um, no, it, look, look at it. You can tell it was. No, so look, it's different. Look at the side. You see what I'm saying? The sides right there, and then where it says right here, it was the Lowry home was was located in this area prior to its destruction by fire in 1980. So it was destroyed by a fire. See, top right, the Miller's house in 1990s. So that's. Original location next to the U Harley Baptist Church before it was moved. Oh. Yeah. So what that one is probably what that is now is probably like a park ranger, or you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, a little get together. Um. Uh, that's the general store. Over yeah, there. that's the general store, and then down right where we was parked at. Uh, is the uh, courthouse that they would use and then like right there you have the little house right there as well um, that you can I, I, I believe that's what they I think that was the schoolhouse I'm not 100% sure that's the schoolhouse I think that, that is a schoolhouse 
Um, and then that was the general store. Over there is the museum. For this place? Yeah. But it's closed because it's Sunday. Um, but that's the little general store. So you could just imagine, you know, you see like right there, that was probably old water right there. And that gap over there, you know, yeah. that banks and stuff. But it's all dried out now. Okay. But this is the general store. You got it. You got any stuff in there? A little bit, like a little chair and a table looking thing. About it. You want to get the top right there where it says general store? Yeah. That is pretty cool though. That's kind of blurry. Huh? There you go. It's trying to focus itself. Yeah. It all fixed it when it comes down to it. That's was the power of being a video editor. Yeah. Ah. Um, now, there is several other things here. Um, we have a Civil War kettle. Uh, here. Civil War um, kettle? Yeah. Because, I mean, this area was actually a, a uh, community at one point. From what I was reading on this morning, it was a community of of about maybe 2,300 people. It could be a little bit more, could be a little bit less. Not really sure exactly on the number. I was reading it this morning before we were leaving. Um, as the Civil War was coming around to this area and they were getting wind of the Civil War coming in this area, it basically knocked down the population um, from 2,300 or so uh, down to probably like 65 people that was living there, um, you know, because they didn't want to have any of that stuff go on, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah that's that bridge that they were talking about on that plaque over here, they were talking about the concrete bridge that would be built, right? Yeah. So they built that to prevent cars from going over that, um, because well, that is the that. oldest cover bridge in the state of Georgia. Huh? Okay. <laughs> what? <coughs> what is this neat? And then uh, you neat. have your traveler's Sorry. well over there. Okay. Is, uh, your commissary. commissary. Um, so that's pretty neat. Okay, so that wasn't the museum. That's actually the library right there. That's just a public library? Yeah. So the museum is somewhere probably in this area. You know what I'm saying? Or do they even have a museum? They, they do at some point. See, so here's the commissary. Commissary was... The commissary were important in the royal agricultural areas. Farming tenants needed a place to purchase finance goods. Landowners generally provided the service via a commissary where tenants could purchase need needed items and not pay until after the sale of their crops, generally once a year. The 1860s commissary has several interesting interior features, including iron strap hinges, ending with two fins, diagonal shutter, shutter bar locks with slotted pins and boards that run ver vertically on the sides and horizontally on the front and rear walls. The building was restored in 1980s. Um, and then and there's your travel as well. Located to the left of the Lowry Mill, this public well, hand dug, hand dug by settlers, was used to gener by generations of weary travelers crossing New Harley Creek. The building encasing the well w was constructed as part of the U Harley Pre Preservation Project in 1970s and 1980s. Pretty interesting. You know? Yeah. What is that? Yeah, that travel as well. That was hand dug by uh, settlers. That's actually pretty cool because they dug that by hand. So this little area right here is like it's a little small you know, town that they had back in the day. Yeah. Um, right. Nah, I'll I'll the right way. 
<laughs> you hardly cover bridge. So this is the actual plaque that states that this was um, registered through the historical places. Um, it was registered in the Etowah District 2000 or in Etowah District July or June 30th, 1975. So. Hmm. That's pretty nifty. Yeah. Holds a lot of history. It, it really does. Uh, and you got your little park over here. <laughs> Watch the road and make sure we don't get run over or anything. See, baby, we can always do a little bit of historical stuff. Oh, of course. She likes history. I love history. I do too. It's fun. It is. To a certain extent. <laughs> no, it's not. It's all nah, fun. It's all it's all fun. It's always nice to it's know about fun. It's all fun. different things that happen in your own country. Well at Tea well, Tuesday. Not even just about like the war and stuff, but like how this became like a little town. Yeah, that's what and I'm saying. What really led up you know, like when you always hear about these towns. And how they go bankrupt and then they eventually turn into ghost towns. You always mm -hmm. have that mindset in the back of your mind, like what happened? Why why did it go bankrupt? Why couldn't they keep it up? You know, and it's it's sad that some of them are gone, but it's also a blessing that they can restore some of them, you know. I guess it's a little outhouse or whatever. Well, I wish that was available right now. <laughs> and then uh, there's your other commissary. Hey. Yeah. But uh, this is the uh, militia yeah. number 851 district courthouse uh -oh. uh, that they had. It was in honor of Cliff A. Nelson, Justice, Justice of Peace, 50 years, you Harley district. If you're w wondering who Cliff A. Nelson is, is probably talking about the man that was um, that that fell to his death when the bridge collapsed back in the day. Um but yeah, oh, it's dark right here. It's right here. It's pretty in here, though. Hey, babe. Courthouse. Who are these? Hey, what are you doing? Like, oh, no, I'm sorry. I, I was looking at this little plaque right here. Did you get me right there by the door? Get you? What, take a picture of you? Yeah. I didn't have. <laughs> Walking down it. This, this phone's different, so. <laughs> oh, I got you. All right, Not so really know what you're doing. next top on our tour will be there's a store the merchant store oh, okay um, which is probably their museum i wouldn't i would assume um this is uh first responders memorial that they have here oh wow um for to honor those dying in the line of duty um, uh -huh. that's that's pretty cool hometown cover bridge bakery huh? oh i wonder if that's open too Check that out. It's well, actually. We can walk over there because there's a plant. Because there's a Baptist church, I believe. And then right down the road from the Baptist church is the uh, Pioneer Cemetery. Yeah. And a lot of them are marked with a wooden cross, but there is also still some possibly unmarked. This thing is open. Yeah, it's a little store, baby. Well, how about that? Cupcakes, cookies, baked pies, special cakes. Wow. That's pretty neat. It's got their own little little store. Huh, how about that? Right 
Look at something. So this was the uh, Merchantile and or you Harley Merchantile and Lowry's uh, black shop or blacksmith shop. So um, the you uh, you Harley Merchant is a landmark in the city of you you Harley. It was originally constructed in the 1860s and has served the community as a dry goods store, a post office, and a saloon. One of the three general stores in New Harley during the late 1800s and early 1900s. It was used as a gathering place to discuss politics and news of the day. The original st structure burned in 19, or 1887. It is not known if the entire building was completely destroyed at that time. The merchantile was rebuilt later that same year in and the center portion of the current store is believed to be part of the original building. Um, that's actually pretty cool. Look what she does. Hand pies, cupcakes, cookies, cheesecake, ice cream, and more. Well, if you guys are ever out in the Harley area and you come out here and you want to see a historical cover bridge, it's the oldest one in the state of Georgia, make sure you guys stop by and uh, check out Nanny, Nanny G's Bakery. Uh, she's got mm -hmm. hand pies, cupcakes, cookies, cheesecakes, ice cream, and many more. Uh, so nice. basically a whole bunch of sweetie, sweet and goodies. Uh, so make sure you bye bye. Yeah, there's the Baptist church right there. Probably where that building was. Yeah. That we, that we kept reading. And it kept repeating the same thing about yeah. I was reading that little sign right there. It's crazy how they have the doors right there. Yeah, I know. Off in it's different. Huh? It's different. Hey, look, steak. Steak and Q. Some kind of steak and Q. Oh, that makes me wonder what's in there. Is that a restaurant? Yeah, it's a restaurant. Well, heck, let's drive all the way back out here and go there. That's what I'm we'll go there for Valentine's Day. <laughs> oh, that's a steak. <laughs> We should go in here and see how much it is. I don't know. Well, if it's a steak place, it's probably pretty good. Oh, sure. Huh? Could be, but you never know. But then again, I mean, this is a small town and, and got loads of history, apparently. Yeah, uh, you know. Yeah. And, uh, I've always noticed that too. Like the smallest towns have the most history. Yeah, they do. Compared to like the bigger cities and and stuff like that, they don't have as much history as small towns. Mm -mm. Which is kind of crazy. Just look at the old cemetery that's right here in the, next to the Baptist Church. Which I don't think they use this Baptist Church anymore. I think they moved. I think this is a store landmark, but I'm not a man. I don't know, they might still use it. There's some playground in there. Playground? So they could. Possibly. Possibility. If those balls right there could talk. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's, yeah. You Harley Baptist Church established in 1852. So that was. Eight years before the Civil War. Oh, I must walk up to that. Come on, buddy. Uh, Is there a plaque down there? Yeah, there's a plaque to talk about the church. Hmm. So this happened about eight years prior to the Civil War. This church was around then? Yeah, that was in 1852. The Civil War started in 1860. Or 1861. This is really old. So about eight, nine years prior to the start of the Civil War. Oh, 
both these guys are. Is there? Uh, is there? Yeah, I see the, uh, the battle flag. Ooh! <laughs> I think there's a duo not here. Yeah? I'm not, I'm not sure, you know? Yeah. Hometown, I guess. Yep. This is a little hometown. Lindsay J. Nicholson, Company F, Company F, 18 Georgia Infantry. Wow. Put that on this side, man. Oh, I know. I just don't want to put too much of them. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Right here is actually the, uh, the uh, Pioneer Cemetery. Whoa. You'll see the cross? Yeah. Yeah. That's how but they there's also them. reports that I've seen. I'm not 100% sure it's like 100% true behind it, but they say that some of, even though you see the crosses, there's still probably some unmarked graves somewhere in this area. Like, see, there's the cross right there. Yeah. Um, but there could be still more out in this area. We just, they don't really know, you know? I mean, because yeah. you got to think about it. This is in the late 1800s, early 1900s or whatever. So, I mean, there's no telling. I wish, yeah, I wasn't mean, but I, I'm not going to laugh at this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh well, he's one right here. So we close that that, So that's how they made them, or? That's uh, that's how they made uh, In the 1800s? Uh -huh. In the 1800s? Yeah. It was just a wooden stake. Really? Yeah. Wow. What's, what is it? Is it moving? What? The stairs. No. Like falling apart. Oh, the milk is not to be careful. Oh, how lovely. This is, this is pretty, though. You know, that one's probably a burial, too, with all the rocks on top. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. The Black Pioneer Cemetery. Um, so. So this is the Black Pioneer Cemetery. The Black Pioneer Cemetery is on is a one acre cemetery that lies between U Harley Presbyterian and U Harley Baptist Church. So that's the Presbyterian, that's the Baptist, and then the cemetery lies in the middle. You know, so um, the cemetery was used for the burial of slaves in U Harley prior to the Civil War, and for African American residents of the area. Through the early 1800s, most of the graves were originally unmarked. By the 1990s, the cemetery was overgrown and virtually forgotten by U Harley, by many in U Harley. Of the 333 known burials in the cemetery, only three individuals have been identified: Heat or Het Powell, a former slave midwife and housekeeper; her daughter Ada and a local man named Jim Scott. In August 2002, the U. Harley Historical Society erected and dedicated a permanent marker in memory of those buried. In 2007, Eagle Scout John Daniels and his troop placed wooden cross at each grave. Um, so that is he, Powell, uh, was born in South Carolina and brought to U. Harley as a slave with her husband and three of her four children her son, Lee, was sold to different slaveholder and he had never saw him again. So, it's pretty it's sad. sad. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty crappy. Um, and then, 
this mm. is a picture of them actually mapping out burial plots. Uh, so this is basically all the burials. Wow, right up in here? Yeah, between that Baptist church. And down there? This is one acres. It's in between the Baptist church on this side and then the Presbyterian church on this side. So it's two different churches. So they could be buried anywhere in here. Right here is the, is the marker that that lady was talking about. Right here. Uh, you know, the last five years. Cemetery. Uh, 1830, 1900s, 333 marked graves in 2001. Dem Scott, 1871. Heap Powell, or Het Powell, 1890. Um, given by the U Harley Historical Society. Wow. Yeah. Is that something? But with that being said, you guys, I want to go ahead and conclude the video. And uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. I'll talk to you guys again soon.